uh, preserving the memory of fallen soldiers is at the heart of Remembrance Sunday and now a new project called India Remembers is remembering particularly the stories of British soldiers who served in India during World War II. One of the veterans involved in that is 97-year-old Lieutenant Colonel J.P. Cross who served in the Brigade of Gurkhas 80 years ago and loved the culture so much that he never came home. We can speak to him now live from Kathmandu. Thank you so much for being... I don't, I've done a live in Kathmandu for a long time, so great to talk to you on the programme today. So tell us a bit about the, the journey to India. What was it like when you first arrived and, and what made you stay? The point was that when I arrived, the, it was so strange getting to Bombay, so different from anything I had seen before, the poverty, the heat, uh, almost the degradation compared with what I had known made a lasting impact on me. And the reason that I never came home was I was never posted home. I uh, uh, was told to stay out to do various jobs, and I, I did them, various jobs. And then decided to stay. Um, tell us what, what, what it was like working with the Gurkhas, for example. I never thought I'd be good enough to serve with them, and therefore I never volunteered to serve with them. Uh, but Providence is strange. I was posted to them, and I realised that I had an uphill job to get as good as them, but never better than them. And I suppose because I have a certain gift for languages, I speak nine Asian languages and English when I'm pressed with you, uh, that I loved the job. It was hard work. It was interesting. Every day was new. And then I lost my sight. Uh, I was on a secret operation near the Thai border on very short commons. Over 202 days, I averaged one kg of food every six days. And I had to have the lens taken out of my eyes. And the doctor said, hit your head, you're blind for life. And that meant that the only people I knew who could look after me, if or when I went blind, were the Gorkhas here in Nepal. And I asked the king of Nepal if I could stay, and I got the uniqueness of being the only foreigner ever allowed to be a landowner and house owner in this country. And now I'm a citizen, so <laughs> I'm safe. <laughs> what an incredible honour, an amazing story as well. And you know, back here, I don't know whether you've been able to see Remembrance Sunday back here in the UK, but it's been a very different affair this year because, of, obviously, of, of coronavirus. I, I wonder how you have been and how do you remember your fallen comrades and friends? Uh, with sadness. And uh, I also remember those very many people who served and got nothing for it, no pension, no gratuity, no medals. Uh, they're the ones I also remember. And uh, one always has to go. There's no one who's spared, but it's those who go before that time that I'm sorry for. And yet, were they spared a worse fate than being killed in battle? Nobody will ever know. Um, and we can see your medals there um, as well while we talk to you. What is the one thing, because you've been involved in this project, isn't you, um, the one thing you want young people to remember or to know about the time you served? The point that I want to, people to remember is that every day counts. No day can be taken for granted. And I have always worked on having a firm base, an alternative and a reserve be that in military terms or civilian terms. And the two things I've always wanted, good health and peace of mind. And yesterday, in my morning walks of five hours and seven minutes, so I have good enough health and peace of mind because at last I managed to Zoom properly with you. Oh, you've done so well. <laughs> five hours and seven minutes. That's, that's just more than the morning walk for most. What a real pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much indeed. And well done for the Zoom. You did it brilliantly. My pleasure. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel J.P. Cross. I feel there's some real wisdom in there, Louise. Absolutely. What a remarkable man.